I presume that Christianity has failed again. Failed again. Well, this time it's God, and so you can sweep this under the rug of Judaism too. Okay. Um, and in this case, a failure to exist, I would think. Well, yeah. I mean, should it would be a short topic, I guess, if I did That's that true. one. But uh, but yeah, that that would certainly count. So today uh, today is my 18th failure show. <laughs> <laughs> so much failure, so little, so few guys. I would think you would have a good show <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> right. Uh, today I'm going to talk about God's mistakes. And the only tangible evidence we have of God is uh, from the Bible itself. And um, you can call that evidence or not. I don't think of it very much as evidence. And the, the Bible paints a picture of Yahweh as kind of rather clumsy, dumb, temperamental, sort of storm god kind of God. Um, nothing like the alleged omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent God that people think they follow. And if the God is, of the Bible is such a screw-up, why worship him? Maybe it's because people want to suck up to power, or maybe because they haven't looked at the Bible. People haven't looked at the Bible very critically. I don't know. But regardless, God's mistakes are another failure of Christianity. It's not really a God there. So today I want to talk about the Garden of Eden, Satan, the Tower of Babel, the Flood, and various other punishments, covenants with Adam and Abraham and David, uh, this Jesus character and where he came from and what, what he's supposed to fix, um, and many others. There's a whole list I have that I'm not going to go into great detail on. In the Garden of Eden, God sets up this garden place with Adam and Eve in there and, and says, don't eat from that tree over there, but, but boy, the God sure could have put the tree outside the garden and he certainly has a means of, of putting a fence around the garden and these sorts of things. So, uh, and, and guess what? This, this accident actually happened. Uh, the, the Adam and Eve ate from the uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil. And uh, then, uh, um, but who's at fault? Well, in the, in the story, it's Adam and Eve at fault, or, this, or Satan may be at fault, or the snake. Uh, but, but who is really in control was God himself. And so there's a sort of a blame the victim sort of thing here. And, and even later on in the Bible, uh, God admits in Jeremiah 18 that he kind of made a mistake there when he created humans and <laughs> kind of got, got it wrong. Oops. Well, what about Sad the Satan trombo. character? Who, who is that certain? Well, serpent. Well, it's not very clear early in the Bible that, that the, the serpent is Satan, although a lot of folks seem to have make that, make that uh, equivocation. Um, wasn't he at fault? Well, God created him too, and God let him go into the, the, the uh, garden when he could have kept him out, you know, presumably uh, you know, better gardening sort of thing. So, um, and God even created evil itself, according to uh, Isaiah 45, 7. Uh, I'm... Um, I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Can I just interrupt for yeah. a minute here? Because a lot of people do not fail to understand dramatic irony. Uh, okay, okay. And, and just point out that when Don says that God is failing to do all these things, he is not. He has not developed a belief in the in a God who actually right. Fails. I'm talking about the God He's character about of the a Bible. A character in the Bible. It's the same thing we would do if we were discussing all the cunning plans that Blackadder has ever made. Right, or Voldemort, or something right. like that. Yeah, that's kind of where I put it. It's one of those one of the bad guys in in literature. Right. Right. So in other parts of the Bible, Satan is God's son, and he's called the son of God a number of places. And he's supposed to be a bad guy, but he never lies or kills or in the Bible that I'm aware of. So, uh, and, and, and he's always sort of blamed for these bad things that happen, yet God seems to be powerless to, saw, to stop him. And God never punishes Satan, although humans deserve eternal torment for, for, for being tempted by Satan. So go figure on that one. And later in Job, we figure out why you know, Satan Satan's, uh, has a special place, and that's because Satan and, and God are gambling buddies. So you can go look up that story. Um, later on in Genesis, we have uh, the flood, and we have the Tower of Babel. And, and you know, the flood is really sort of uh, uh, all, all these humans are wicked, and we're going to just kill them all because you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't have done a better better made a better thing apparently uh, according to the God and 
And in Genesis uh, 6, 1 through 4, you kind of find out why uh, they're, they're evil. And that's because uh, they've interbred with the sons of God and, and the daughters of man have interbred. And, and so they're, they're definitely wicked by, because of that. So what does that tell you about the son, the son of uh, God if, uh, if they had to be destroyed and we, we don't have to be destroyed? So anyway. The Tower of Babel, uh, those, if those humans in Genesis 11, those humans get a little too uppity, maybe they should get smacked down. And uh, really this is a, a just, store, just so story about why we speak different languages, although it's yet another smackdown from God. And again, who's really in control here? If God is in control, he shouldn't have to do these things. And why, do you, why does he keep blaming uh, the humans on, on these things that are ultimately his fault? And, and the main theme in the early part of the Bible seems to be might makes right. That's kind of the, the character we're, we're getting here. Later on in the Bible, God makes a bunch of promises. So in, in uh, Genesis uh, 22, uh, Abra- there's a covenant with Abraham. God, God promises uh, Abraham a whole bunch of land in exchange for, for being, willingness, being willing to kill his kid. And I, I liken this episode as something like a gang initiation ritual where he says, oh, put a hit on this kid and, and, and you can be my, my special guy, that sort of thing. And uh, in Genesis 22, 17 through 18, uh, that in blessing I will, I will bless thee and in multiplying I will multiply the seed as the stars of the heaven and in the sand which is on the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the, the gate of his, his enemies and thy seed shall all the nations of earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. So God has chosen the Abraham's children to be the, the blessed, blessed people. But what's happened to the, to, uh, the is, Israelis or, or Israelites or the, the Hebrews since then? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of pretty awful stuff uh, in, in more recent times. So this whole blessing thing didn't work out very well. Well, what about the covenant with David? Well, in 2 Samuel... Uh, he likes David quite a, uh, God likes David quite a bit, and he says to him, uh, 2 Samuel 7, uh, 10 through 16, and I'm a lighting part of this to make it shorter, I will appoint thee a place for my people in Israel, and I will plant them, and they will dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness affect, affect them any more as before time. Also the Lord telleth thee that, that he will make thee a, a house, and thine house will be Thy kingdom in thy house and thy kingdom will be established forever before thee, and thy throne shall be established forever. So God promises David that his kingdom will last forever, and it didn't, of course. Uh, it was destroyed 400 years after that and was never rebuilt. So, so that promise didn't help. And this whole God you know, thing. I, I want to get a little meta here, if, okay. if you don't mind. Uh, you know, all these promises about their everlasting favor uh, are being made to the Jews, who have, who are at this point in history, a very, very small and dwindling minority. And mm-hmm. one of the major concerns of of Jews is is that. Um, Judaism is kind of gradually dwindling, uh, not just due to enemies, but due to uh, so, sort of a, a gradual loss of interest. I mean, it used to be very strict that Jews would have to intermarry other Jews. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, just marry each other instead of uh, going outside. Uh, you know, that's what Fiddler on the Roof is, sort of grieving at the end that, that the daughter is marrying a goy. <laughs> um, and... You know, pe- people are not that concerned about, like, keeping the bloodline pure, and there are all these sort of weaker strains of Judaism, like the one my sister and I come from. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Reformed. Right. Mm-hmm. And so even though there's like there was a state of Israel sort of forcibly created, like, 50 or 60 years ago, um, as, as a whole, as a culture, there, there's a lot of worry among Jews that... Uh, that their traditions are kind of falling by the wayside little by little. And so I wonder how that fits in with these with these supposed promises. Of course, Christians would just say, oh, well, Jews lost the mantle of being the chosen people or something, but or some of them would. Yeah, yeah, and there's this blame game going on that, hey, maybe they deserved it, but there's really no caveats in, in the Bible as far as, oh, well, you got to do this for me in, in perpetuity. Uh, it's really sort of, hey... 
um, David, I like you. This is this is going to happen to you because I like you, sort of thing. And right. made a, made a forever promise that that wasn't wasn't kept. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, yeah, uh, you know, and I know that I know that the the Jews uh, in earlier Judaism were very concerned about some of these broken promises because uh, you know it really does fly in the face of some of the. The, the the things they thought about their God, right? If, right. God, if God is really, if we're really His chosen people, and He made this promise to us, how has this failed? What's up with the Holocaust? Right, right, right. That's that's, that's more modern, and certainly Jews have suffered a lot of persecution, even you know, last fourteen hundred years or more. Right, sure. So. Um, so on these promises, it reminds me a lot of like a drunk father that, that promises his kid, hey, I'm going to take you to Disneyland and just any day now and, and never quite keeps them. So, uh, so those, are, those are two of the main promises he made that, that weren't kept. Um, there's this whole Mary and Jesus thing in the New, New Testament. Well, God ends up impregnating a virgin without consent from her owner. Now, remember, women were owned and they were property, and she wasn't yet the property of, of Joseph at that time. So uh, who, I don't know where her father was, but uh, he wasn't, wasn't keeping a good eye out for her. And um, so through this child, through Jesus, uh, there's this effectively a, a, a revision of Scripture because he couldn't even get that right, he had to re come back and revise it, and, and ended up leaving a confusing mess where, where what some, some of it, some Christians think is, is okay from the Old Testament, some of it's thrown out, and there's a whole game here of, of, of spin-doctoring uh, whatever Old Testament thing you want and saying, oh, that's still, still valid and other things are not valid, and you get to pick and choose, and anyway. And then the mess continues with, with uh, with Muhammad, with God 3.0, and with Mormonism, God 2.1, and other these other minor variants running around. So there's just there's just a major major confusion going on because he couldn't get the scripture right to begin with, and then he has to kill his own son in keeping with the blood sacrifice law, which presumably he made up and was unable to change himself to atone for his mistakes of making that that were made in the Garden of Eden. So. So the whole the whole reason for ex for Jesus existing was was to fix a mistake, presumably that that God set up, and 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 there had to be this atonement. So it's just all very crazy as far as I'm concerned. So there are many other mistakes in the Bible. I'll just touch on these briefly. There was the inability to tell the firstborn he to for God to be able to tell the firstborn Hebrews and and uh, during during the uh, the Exodus uh, episode. Uh, and and when the when God sent the plague into Egypt, uh, he he needed a little reminder of hey don't don't kill these people and kill these other people instead. I mean he couldn't just poke his head in and see yeah there, there's Jews in here they had to paint their doors right right, right. so that was kind of kind of lame. Um, we we have the in cosmology we have this giant universe that supposedly for the sole purpose of creating mankind isn't that awfully wasteful. We have the intelligent design of humans and other living things, which, uh, uh, if you can look on the web, there's lots of non-intelligent things uh, as far as the design goes, and that's another topic in entirely. Uh, there's a mistake of having con artists, demagogues, liars, murderers, and pedophiles as his, his marketeers uh, for his religion. Maybe he could choose folks a little better. Um, there's the problem of him wanting to, us to know him, by, but, but, but doing such an exceptional job of hiding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a mistake as far as I'm concerned. So the conclusion, I have a quote from Richard Dawkins here, the God of the Old Testament is arguably, arguably the most unpleasant character in all of fiction, jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control fleek, a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a mis misogynistic, homophobic, race, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, philicidal, pestilent, Pestilential, megalomaniacal, me, mental, <laughs> megalomaniacal, me, me, sadomasochistic, me, capriciously me, malevolent me, bully. bully. <laughs> That's say that three times fast. Anyway, uh, and and he certainly made a lot of mistakes in the Bible, and and chalked that up as another failure of Christianity and Judaism. And all okay. That. So, okay. thanks, Don. Sure.